So in this lesson, we want to take a look at finding the area of regular polygons. Remember that a regular polygon is a polygon that has congruent sides and angles. And uh, we want to be able to find the area of that. So a uh, couple little vocabulary terms here. We've got sides, which is pretty obvious. This is the side of a polygon. Uh, a regular polygon also has something called a radius, just like a circle does. And technically, that, the reason why it's called a radius is because that's the radius of the circumscribed circle that goes around it like this. So this is the radius. So we have the radius of a regular polygon, we have the side, and then we have this thing called the apothem that's going to be important. And that is the perpendicular line that goes from the center of the regular polygon to the side. And those are all the parts and pieces that we need in order to find the area of a regular polygon. So we need to get a method that we can use to find the area of a polygon with any number of sides, 100 sides, 1,000 sides, a million sides, whatever we want. So uh, to begin, uh, we're going to look at the angles here. So let's kind of get a method for finding the angles. Whenever we have a regular polygon, like this square here, uh, we've got these angles in the middle. This is called a central angle. It's the angle made by two radiuses. And uh, so if we want to find this angle, well, this is a four-sided polygon. So how would we get that? We know it's 360 all the way around, right? So if we take 360 and divide it by 4, we get 90. So this is obviously a 90-degree angle. And so with all of these angles around here. Now we're going to want to, to talk about this triangle down here. So we're going to need to take that 90 which is the same for all four angles. This guy's 90, this guy's 90, this guy's 90. And we want to find this angle 2. Well, that's going to be half of 90. All right, so if we take 90 divided by 2, we get 45. And so this is a 45 degree angle. And sometimes it's going to be useful to find this angle down here. Well, this is a right triangle with this apothem, which is also the height of this triangle. So that makes a nice 45, 45, 90. What if we have six sides? What's the process for finding those angles there? So if we're going to want to find the area here, we're going to need to find these angles in the middle. Well, it's all the way around. is going to be 360. So this guy's 360 divided by 60. And this one's going to be 60 degrees. Okay. And what about this guy? Well, if all of these are 60 degrees, we can cut that uh, 60 in half and we get angle 2, which will be 30. And then this little right triangle here tells us that that angle 3, which is going to be useful sometime, that is going to be a 60 degree angle, right? So the first step in finding area of regular polygons is finding these angles. If we have a triangle, then we can take, we have three of these central angles. So we can take 360 divided by 3, and that gives us 120 degrees. If we cut that in half, we get 60 degrees for angle 2, and then subtract from 90 because we have a, uh, a right triangle down here. And so this angle 3 is going to be 30. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to be able to find these angles because we're going to use these right triangles here in some trigonometry. So that's the process we want to do here. Now notice when we draw these triangles made by all the radii, which is plural for radiuses, we get four congruent triangles here, six congruent triangles, three congruent triangles. So if we want to find the area of one of these polygons, all we've got to do is find the area of one of these triangles and multiply it by the number of sides. And that's going to be our strategy. So now let's use that to find some areas. We want to find the areas of each of these polygons. So here we have a hexagon, six sides, and we have a radius 
that's a radius there, of six centimeters. Well, first thing we gotta do is we've got to figure out what kind of angles we have here. Again, we've got six of these angles, these central angles around the middle. This center one, so 360 divided by six is gonna give us 60 degrees. So these are each 60 degrees all the way around here. And if we cut that in half, we get 30 degrees. And so we've got this right triangle down here. And so this right triangle is gonna be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So that's all very nice and useful. So what we're talking about here is we need to find the area of this triangle right here. And if we can find the area of this whole triangle, then we can multiply it by six. Well, in order to do that, we're gonna to need to find this side here. So we're gonna use that little green triangle. I'm gonna find this little half side first, and then we're gonna use that to find the apothem in here, all right? So I like to sketch a, a, a little version of this triangle, maybe a little larger one, uh, so that we can work with it here. That's six centimeters, this is 60 degrees, and uh, this is X, and this is the apothem. Well, we know, using trigonometry and special right triangles, uh, how to find these sides of this triangle here. Uh, and so let's let's use some trigonometry. Trigonometry will always work. Um, so special right triangles will work in this case, but let's get, see how the trigonometry. Well, we know that we want to find this side, which is the adjacent to the 60, and we know the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse comes from cosine. So remember the cosine in this triangle of 60 is x over 6. And we can solve that easily by multiplying both sides by 6. And that gives us the x here is going to be 6 times the cosine of 60. So 6 cosine of 60 is 3, which we should have expected here because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we know that the short leg is half of the hypotenuse. Then, well, we uh, using special right triangles, we should remember that this is going to be 3 square root of 3, or if we want to use our trigonometry again, let's do that. This is opposite of the 60, and we know the hypotenuse, so let's use sine. The sine of 60 is going to be the apothem over 6, and we need that apothem because that's going to be the Help us to find the area of this triangle. And so if we multiply both sides by 6 here, we're going to find out how big A is. And so that's going to give us, and that one's not so nice and neat. Let's keep a few decimal places. That's 5.196 there. So that's going to be the apothem, 5.196. So we know that this half side is 3. This side's going to be 3 also because this whole base is going to be 6. So the base of this triangle is 6. Well, let's find the area of that triangle. The area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, right? So that's going to be 1 half times 6 times the height, 5.196. So that's the area of the triangle. How are we going to find... Well, let's go ahead and find that out here. If you don't have to uh, hit or retype, if you have an answer key like this Desmos calculator does, I use that. Anyways, we get 15.588. Great, so that's the area of the triangle. Well, what are we going to do now to find the area of the whole thing? So that's just one triangle there. Well, there's six of them. So we found the area of one triangle. So now the area of the hexagon is going to be six times that. And that's just going to give us 93.5 square centimeters. So again, the idea is if we can find the area of one triangle, multiply it by six, we've got the total area. All right. Well, that was if we had the radius. In this example here, we got a pentagon. Well, if we've got a pentagon, we're going to want to do the same idea. 
We want to break it into, in this case, five triangles. Now, my drawing is not perfect, but if we had that perfect center, we could do this. And if we can find the area of one of these triangles, then we can multiply it by five. So we're going to want to cut this triangle in half and focus on this half triangle there. So if the whole thing is eight, the whole side, that is, is eight, and we cut this in half, we're going to have a little half side of four. We're going to need the apothem because that's the height of the triangle. And we actually don't need to find this radius. We don't need that. All we need to find the area of the triangle is a base and a height, right? Area of the triangle is one half base times height. So we're not going to waste time finding that radius. We just need the apothem. But we do need some angles here. So there's five of these angles around the middle. So we're going to take 360 divided by 5. And that gives our central angle. Uh, that's going to be 72 degrees. And then if we cut uh, 72 in half, so this angle right here is 72. Cut that in half and we get 36 degrees. So this angle is 36. And, and again, it's helpful to draw this little half triangle because now we can look at this and say, well, we know the tangent, right? The tangent of 36 is 4 over A. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 4 over A there. And uh, so we need to solve this up. We worked on this in our trigonometry chapter there. And we can cross multiply. Or remember, we have this, this property that said we can swap diagonally. So A, or A over 1 if you want, is going to be equal to 4 over tan 36. And that gives us 5.506, it looks like. 5.506 there. And now we have everything we need to find the area of the triangle. So we're going to find the area of the triangle first. That's 1 half times the base. The base is the whole 8 here. Times the height. The height is the apothem, which is 5.506. So a half of 8 is obviously 4, so it's just 4 times that number there. So we'll just get that answer times 4. And there it is, 22.02, .02, or just 22. Uh, so the area of the triangle is 22.02, .02, but we have a whole bunch of those triangles. How many of those triangles do we have? We have five of them. So we found the area of the one triangle, and we're going to multiply it by five. So let's do that. And multiplying that by five, we get 110.11. So that's the area of the pentagon. And remember, that is going to be square inches. So, we've got a general process here. We're finding the area of one triangle and multiplying it by how many there are. And we're using some trigonometry to find those missing parts to get that area. So, here's some formulas. Now, if you remember the process, you don't really need to remember these formulas, but let's just make the formulas here. What did we just do there? Well, we found the area of one triangle. How did we do that? We took one half times this side times the height, which is the apothem. So we found one half times the apothem times the side. That's really just one half base times height, right? And then what do we multiply it by? Here we multiplied it by six. Here we multiplied it by five. So it's going to be times however many triangles there are, right? Well, the number of triangles is the number of sides. So if n is the number of sides, a is the apothem, and s is the side length, we have one half asn, one half apothem times side times number of sides. Now, one nice way to kind of shortcut this, if we think about this, what do you get when you take the side times the number of sides? If we take the side length, 8, times 5, what does that give us? Well, that's the perimeter. So another way to, to simplify this equation is we can say we got 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter. So this guy here is the perimeter. Either one works. Notice uh, uh, they're all based on the area of a triangle. This Here you can see we've got the area of a triangle 1 half apothem times the side times the number of sides. 
This is like one half times the apothem times all the sides put together. It's the same thing. So one half AP or one half ASM. So let's try one last example, just kind of see how this works all together. All right, so uh, we want to find the area of this decagon. Decagon, 10 sides, right? So um, if you don't have the shape drawn out, don't try to draw it out. That's going to be a pain. Here's what I say a lot, a lot of times. Uh, if this drawing isn't given and all it's given is those words, find the area of decagon with a radius of 9, well, just draw this little picture. Because all we really need to think about is one of these triangles. These are little right triangles or these, these slices. Well, there's going to be 10 of these. If we draw in all the radiuses, there will be 10 of these central angles. 360 divided by 10 is obviously 36. So this guy's 36. We cut that in half and we get this angle, which is 18. Now we're going to need to find the side and the apothem. So there's the apothem, but first we need to find the half side. So we're going to focus on this right triangle here to find the half side and the apothem. Well, uh, we've got an 18 degree angle. And we know that, uh, uh, let's see, this is the opposite to that angle and this is the hypotenuse. So let's use sine. Sine of 18 degrees is x over 9. And so x is just, multiply both sides by 9. And so x is 9 sine 18. Now if you really want a decimal, you can go get it. You actually don't have to. You could just kind of leave it like that if you want and keep moving forward. But we'll go get a decimal. 9 sine 18 gives us 2.781. So that's good to know. From that, we can get the whole side length. The whole side length is going to be twice that. Let's see. Twice that's going to be, what, uh, 5.562, uh, I believe. Now, before we go find our area, we're going to need our apothem. So how does the apothem relate to the 18? The apothem is connected. It's the adjacent, and 9 is the hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. So we're going to need a cosine formula here. So let's go cosine of 18 degrees is going to be A over 9. Multiply both sides by 9 there. And we'll get 9 times the cosine of 18 degrees equals A. Watch out for your A and your 9. Don't make them look like the same thing like I kind of just did there. All right. Let's see what our calculator has to say about that. You can kind of see that this trigonometry uh, will start to become pretty quick, hopefully, if it's not already. So that's uh, uh, 8.560 uh, would be what that is, 8.560. There's our apothem. All right, so we've got our area now of the decagon is going to be one half apothem times a side times a number of sides. So that's going to be one half times 8.560 times what do we get? We got 5.562. Five six two times the number of sides, which is ten, and it looks like we end up with two hundred and thirty eight point zero five or point one, and that was what was our units there? Inches, I believe, inches. All right, so that it would be square inches. That's the process: one half ASN or one half AP. Again, we're just finding the area of one triangle using trigonometry and multiplying it by the number of sides. So there you have it. Great job. Work hard, and you'll get it with a little bit of practice. Keep it up. Have a great day.